you're using your local internet service provider for email, Comcast, Cox Cable, AT&T, Bell South, etc., you should stop doing that immediately. In today's video, I'm going to explain to you why you need to stop doing that and when it's also acceptable to do so. A lot of clients I know use an email address like Comcast.net for their business because they originally set it up as a personal email address and then later started a business and kept that email. But here's several reasons why that's a bad idea to keep doing. One, if you have an email address like JPP662901 at BellSouth.net, which may have been your original email address, it doesn't look very professional. If you're running a real estate company or a lawn care business, you want your email address to represent your business, not look like something you just threw together. Number two, if you're using your personal email address as your business email address, it's entirely possible you might miss a customer email because it's mixed in with all your personal stuff. Either a spam filter might catch a customer email and route it into the spam folder, or while going through your personal junk, you might accidentally delete a customer email not even realizing that that's what that was. Was. Number three, if you use your local provider for email, if you have a local storm or something along those lines that knocks out your internet, you're likely going to lose access to your email as well, which means for the entire length of time that your internet is down, you won't be able to pull up your email on your phone or tablet because the service is down. Whereas if you use a bigger service like a Gmail or a Yahoo or something like that, you don't have to worry about that. Number four, and this is probably the most important point and really the subject of this video. If at some point you decide to change internet service providers, say you decide Comcast is no longer providing you the service that you're come to expect and you want to switch to AT&T, as soon as you do that, you are likely to lose that Comcast email address as soon as you close your account with Comcast. If Comcast is who you are using for your business email and you lose that account, now you have just lost access to all your customer email and that's a problem. And usually once the customer account has been deleted from their system as no longer being a customer, that email account is going to go with it and it's highly unlikely that you'll be able to get it back and it's an almost impossibility of getting that email back for free if that happens. So what do you do? Well, if you have a business, a domain name is ideally what you want. So for example, if you are Tim's Lawn Care, you wanna have an email address that is something at timslawncare.com. That way your email is not dependent on your local provider. It's not dependent on whether the weather is good in your area or not. That email is going to work all the time without fail. Now, don't you think Tim at timslawncare.com sounds a lot more professional than jpp662901 at comcast.net? I think so. Now a second option, and one which I particularly recommend, is to use a service like Gmail or Yahoo. Now a few years ago, Gmail and Yahoo were still looked at as this thing that other people did. Nowadays, with Gmail specifically being so compatible with all devices, Android, iPhone, tablets, PC, everything, you can check your Gmail, use Google Drive, all the services that Google offers. You can do all of that from any device and it's independent of the weather. It's independent of a small internet provider. All you have to have is internet. Even if your internet went out at your home, you could drive down to the local coffee shop, jump on their Wi-Fi, and boom, you have access to everything. So you stay up when everybody else is down. And in business, uptime is everything. Now, one of the reasons I like Gmail, like I said, is just super compatible. I've got probably 12 email addresses with Gmail. I use them for everything. I have personal email, I have junk email that I want to just submit a form. I don't care about checking it. Uh, I have business emails, multiple business emails, one for my local computer business, one for YouTube, one for uh, advertisers. One, I have different email addresses for everything and I can keep all of those nice and organized. And again, it doesn't depend on anything happening with my local internet provider. If I want to change companies, I lose nothing, guaranteed. And once again, that means you have the flexibility to change your internet provider if you want to without fear of losing your data. Now I have many clients that say, I've had this email address forever and I can't change. Now, yes, it is true, it is a pain, but it can be done. It's not too terribly difficult. You just have to create a new address and start training everybody who contacts you to use the new email address. And I'll show you how to do that in a future video where we set up a new email address and then how you deal with your current customers 
letting them know of your new email address. It's just a matter of setting up auto replies in your email, reaching out to your customers and so on. It is a pain, but once you do it, you can still keep your personal email address, but now you have your business email address separate. Now, with all that being said, if you've had your internet provider for years and you're happy with them, or you don't have a business and everything you get is personal, then in that case, don't change a thing. Leave it exactly the way it is, no problem. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to give you something to think about. And also remember, if you lose your email, you also lose your contacts in that email. So now you can't even go and reach out to your customers who have your email address to tell them you're down or that you no longer are using this email address. So you're in trouble on two fronts. I've seen this happen time and time again and it always frustrates me when someone does this and they don't think about their email. They just assume that they can stop using internet and everything else will work fine. But you gotta remember, these companies pay money to keep these mail servers running. That's part of what your bill pays for. Well, if you're no longer giving them money, they have no incentive to keep the mail server running. So they're going to delete this account and they don't care. You're no longer their customer. They don't care. I certainly hope you found this video useful. I hope you stop and think just for a second about your mail and what it means to you and maybe take some of my suggestions to heart. I'd love to hear your feedback on the subject. You can comment down below and we'll talk about it. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.